Good morning, Gus Franklin families. I know some of you are a little bored and not quite sure what to do, so I thought I would just read daily and maybe do a few science experiments. So the first book I'm going to read is called The Handiest Things in the World by Andrew Clements. It's a New York best-selling author, and the photographs are by Raquel, and I can't really see her last name because it's covered, but we're gonna get it started. So here it is, Andrew Clements, The Handiest Things in the World, photographs by Raquel Jarmillo. So here we go. Maybe some of you will join me soon. Okay, of all the handy things there are, the hand itself is best by far. To grab, to hold, to pull or twist, the hand itself is handiest. But other things are handy too. Just look around, you'll see it's true. Which things are handiest for you depends on what you need to do. The things I want to show you here, things old and new from far and near, they all come from a simple plan. The hand is where they all began. Mealtime happens every day. Keep your fingers clean this way. Don't let Rover stray away. This will hold him night and day. So what is he using to hold the dog? Looks like a leash. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Add, subtract, then add again. What is he using to add? What is this right here? There's another thing he's using to add. What do we call these? Zigzag, flip, flap, hard to get. Catch them with your handy net. So what is she catching right over here? And what is she using? Two what hands can hold and pour. This will pour a whole lot more. So she's using something to actually pour. Which one is easier to pour into the flower pot? Raindrops falling from the sky. This will help to keep you dry. Wish I might, wish I may sweep this dust stuff away. What is she using to sweep? Is it easier to use your hands? Or is it easier to use this broom? Handmade shade for squinty eyes. This will help with sunny skies. So what is he doing? What is he doing? Digging in and scooping down. Let's move lots of dirt around. One student is using their hand and another student is using a little shovel. Tidy is the way to be. This will help enormously. So how do you comb your hair? Use a brush to brush your hair, comb. How do you put your hair up if you need to? Flap a hand to make a breeze. Push more air with one of these. Tap and rhythm, keep the beat. Work with these and make some heat. How many of you have kids that actually use your pots and pans? My kids always use pots and pans to make a little bit of noise. What's the width or length or height? This thing always gets it right. So what type of measuring tool is this? Usually in science, we would use a meter stick or a ruler. Sticky fingers make a mess. Mixers make the mess much less. Waves will wash these words away. Write this way and words will stay. When windy winter time appears, these feel good on frosty ears. So what is she doing? And what is the snowman wearing? 
10,000 years have come and gone. Our hands keep working on and on. As the future years unfold, new handy tools will grip or hold. Whatever we may need to do, one fact remains forever true for sharing love with tenderness. The hand itself is handiness, handiest. So this actually is geared towards kindergartners. Um, it's the handiest things in the world. One of the things I'm going to start doing is doing some science labs here. It'll give you something to do, something to actually uh, do with your kids when you're home. This, is, again, it's geared towards kindergarten. And we have some other books. I'm gonna read one more before I actually have to go. It's called Iggy Peck, Architect by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. This is one of my favorite books. That's the book. So Iggy Peck, Architect. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Gra good gracious, Igginess. His mother explained. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen, but her smile faded fast at light when, when blue passed. She realized those diapers weren't clean. Igginess, my son, or Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? This That's disgusting, and Nancy, it stinks. So he built a tower of dirty diapers, yuck. But Iggy was gone, he was out of the lawn, using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. Do any of you have a few kids that do this at home? They just make up things to do? When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam, bright gleam in his eye, and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. This would be a great thing to look up online. What is the St. Louis Arch? Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Leela Greer. On the first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Roman escape, I could care less about buildings, ancient or new, she said in the lecture about architecture. That is hot, had no place in grade two. So Gothic and Romanesque, hmm, look. That might seem severe, but she was sincere for when she was no more than seven, she had a great fright at a dizzy height in a building too tall, it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lily got lost from the group. So his teacher got lost. Hmm. She was found two days later in a stuck elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that, above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I think his teacher was a little afraid of buildings. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. Young Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? No, ma'am, Iggy, Iggy said. He lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. No second grade. Now second grade was a bore. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. 
I think Iggy was a little sad that he couldn't build anymore. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Leela Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my. Alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. What do you think Iggy's going to do with that bridge? The class was amazed. They, amazed. they stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Leela's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together at, as one. Look, the whole class is doing something. They're building. And when she came to, Miss Leela Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And as far side, and on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. Boots, trees, roots, boots, tree roots and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. Wow. It all became clear to Miss Leela Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now every week, a Blue River Creek elementary and second grade, all the school kids can hear along with Miss Greer how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from Pi, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. So what do you wanna grow up to be? So again, my goal is to do a few science experiments. I'm not gonna be able to do that today, but I'm gonna be using these books as a guide. Thank you for watching and I'm off to help deliver or offer meals to our parents at Adelanto Elementary School. See you later.